In 2008, Tees Australia implemented a number of changes that would affect the environmental impact and sustainability of its hide processing plant at Mergen in Queensland. Originally a wet blue tanning facility, Tees added three brining raceways and a flesh rendering process to its plant. Then in a major move in 2010, the company decommissioned its old washing barrels and wooden tanning vats to make the hide brining service its core business. A decision that affected how the company managed wastewater from the two essentials in the brining process, salt and water. Every hide takes around four to five kilos of salt with it. So that's basically a net income into the, into the business, so we need to bring that in. Plus any brine we produced was taking salt out. So we were taking uh, approximately eight kilos of salt to, to brine process a hide. So there was four or five going out the gate and three or four going out into evaporation ponds, which it didn't have a return loop, which was just money being wasted really. What was needed was a way to reclaim salt quickly and recycle treated wastewater rather than use it to irrigate the company's pasture paddocks. Tees found the answer in a combination of brine evaporation and nano filtration technologies. This is the first application of these intertwined technologies within the hide processing sector in Australia and represents best in class environmental practice in hide processing. Prior to brining, a hide is first stripped of any remaining flesh, which goes to the plant's rendering vessel. The hides are then kept in the salt water solution for 18 hours. Wastewater, previously only sent to evaporation ponds, is now quickly processed under vacuum in the brine evaporator. The vacuum is there to reduce the boiling temperature. So we basically boil our brine around about 90 degrees. In that process, the brine actually then comes saturated and concentrated. Once it reaches an SG of around about 1202, salt then precipitates out of the liquor. This reclaimed salt is fed back into the brine tanks and the quality of the water collected from the condenser makes it suitable to use in the plant's four megawatt boiler. We're processing about 10 to 15 litres of brine per hide is what our goal is. So we can capture out of that um, 30,000 litres of water a day and out of that we're getting about 8,000 kilos, 7 to 8,000 kilos of salt per day in introducing back into the system. Recycling the treated brine water had another beneficial environmental impact. So the brine evaporator through the week captures 150,000 litres of reclaimed water from the brine evaporating process. In other words, that's taking 150,000 litres of water from the irrigation process. Since we stopped the irrigation, we have embarked on a rehabilitation program to bring this pasture back into normal agricultural productive land. In addition to reclaiming salt and recycling the wastewater via the brine evaporator, the rendering plant allowed Tees to address another waste management issue. Previously, hide fleshings had to be disposed of off-site. Now they're value added. We get approximately six to eight kilos of fleshings per hide. Out of that, we get four to four and a half litres of tallow and half a kilo of meat meal per hide. The rendering vessel cooks the flesh and separates the meat meal from the tallow. The meal is used in poultry and fish feed, while the tallow is exported and used in the manufacture of consumables. The other major environmental improvement Tees has made to its Mergen hide brining facility is to its effluent treatment. After the plant's general wastewater goes through an activated sludge process, polishing pond water from the clarifier is pumped to the plant's VSEP filtration system. Now the nanofiltration is working on the VSEP technology, where we take a membrane and we vibrate it very, very quickly, and that allows the solids to not form on the membrane. This then allows us to get clean water from the, the nano, which we then send on to the RO. Before going through reverse osmosis, the nano removes calcium, magnesium and most of the sodium from the incoming polished wastewater. 
Then the reverse osmosis filters out the remaining high in sodium and chlorides. The RO concentrate is returned to the activated sludge cycle, while the ultra clean RO water is reused in the plant, reducing the facility's use of town water. So with the introduction of the nanofiltration, the RO reverse osmosis filtration and the brine evaporation plant, we're happy to report that we have zero discharge from any of our effluent waters and just one skip of general rubbish a week is all we have. A byproduct of the effluent treatment has also found a market. The sludge settled out in the clarifying tank is recovered and mixed with sawdust and sold to a compost manufacturer. Now, how old is this compost, Gav? Yeah? Uh, this is about six weeks old, Scotty. Operating the wastewater recycling system at our hard processing facility at Mergen costs money. It costs us more than it would if we were to purchase potable water off of the main. But we do it because we want to go above and beyond our legal and compliance requirements. Tees Australia Mergen is a, is a major local employer, which is good for the local community as well. We do have a big investment in this group and we have a big investment within this town. And as Tees aims to increase site capacity by increasing the number of raceways and high throughput, it's an investment in the future. A future that is commercially successful, as well as one that preserves valuable resources such as water and continues to be environmentally responsible.